Judge Scott McAfee is pissed as he decides whether DA Fannie Willis stays or goes from Trump's Georgia case. Now, Willis has been very defiant throughout this entire process, even lying with former prosecutor Nathan Wade as they both conspire to fool the court and the American people. As we now know, Nathan Wade has removed himself from the case because of the possible conflict of interest that has risen knowing that they were in a relationship before this case even started. Donald Trump's legal team, led by Steve Sadow, have already appealed keeping Fannie Willis on the case. The reason is that the ruling from Judge Scott McAfee seems to be more like a half solution than an actual solution. So it's either Fannie Willis has to go or this entire case is done. Now, Fannie Willis really has not done herself many favors in the eye of the American public. In fact, many critics see her as being obnoxious to a point where she looks as if she's she just doesn't respect the justice system, nor does it look like she respects Judge Scott McAfee himself. And this is only further proven when the DA openly mocks what Judge Scott McAfee told her. It's about something that she's done before and it's an act that she repeated recently. Now, before I share this with you guys, all I ask is that you take one second, drop a quick like for the video. I totally appreciate you guys. And I just wanna thank you so much for sharing these videos on Facebook and Twitter. Recently, they tell me they don't like me to talk about race. Well, I'ma talk about it anyway. <laughs> Truth is, it's some challenges that come to being black. Mm, T.A. Willis making that comment despite Judge Scott McAfee's rebuke. Former President Donald Trump and co-defendants already appealing the decision to keep Willis on the case. So where is this heading? Good thing we have our legal eagles, John, you and Katie Tricaski here. So John, what say you? I think Fannie Willis, unfortunately, is forgetting that this case is not about her. It's not even really about Donald Trump. It's about public faith in the justice system. And when a judge orders a prosecutor not to talk about race, not to throw around racial accusations, and then the DA does it anyway, then she's undermining public faith in the integrity of justice. She's actually demonstrating the kind of disregard for the courts that she was when she was testifying. And the job of the prosecutor ultimately is to make sure that the public has faith in the decisions of the courts and the justice system. And she's undermining that. And that's going to I think undermine her ability to carry out this trial. It's only gonna help Donald Trump. Many analysts and experts are saying that race doesn't have anything to do with this case. In fact, this is a court system issue. What matters here are the facts. You're supposed to present evidence and prove your point to a justice system that would ultimately be impartial to everyone. So whether you're a former president or you're a guy who's just working nine to five, with Willis's actions, it looks like she wants the court and the public to favor her decisions just because she feels like she's been handed a poor set cards in life. And to top it all off, she wants the justice system to keep Donald Trump out of the White House just because he's speaking his mind. Last time I heard, we have a right to speak freely, right? First Amendment rights, which shows exactly how Willis is kind of hypocritical here. So Donald Trump has been gagged from speaking his mind. They use it against him, even though we know that the First Amendment exists. This is the hush money case that is due to start two weeks from today. The judge in that case has tonight just issued an expanded gag order on Mr. Trump. Last week, this judge issued an order that banned Trump from attacking witnesses or prosecutors or jurors or court staff, as well as their relatives. Um, after that gag order, Trump started publicly attacking um, not only the judge, who actually is and remains sort of fair game for criticism under the gag order. Uh, but he also repeatedly went after the judge's daughter, including identifying her by name on social media. Now, the New York district attorney, the prosecutor who has brought this case, asked the judge to expand the gag order to include family members of the judge and family members of the DA, of the prosecutor. Tonight, the judge has done just that. So again, the gag order still doesn't apply to the judge himself or the prosecutor himself, but it does now include their families. Um, in, in expanding the gag order in that way, the judge did not mince words. He said tonight, quote, this pattern of attacking family members of presiding jurists and attorneys assigned to his cases serves no legitimate purpose. It merely injects fear in those assigned or called to participate in the proceedings that not only they, but their family members as well are quote, fair game for defendants vitriol. The average observer must now, after hearing defendants recent attacks, draw the conclusion that if they become involved in these proceedings, even tangentially, they should worry not only for themselves, but for their loved ones as well. 
such concerns will undoubtedly interfere with the fair administration of justice and constitutes direct attack on the rule of law itself. Again, that, that case, that criminal case, the first ever criminal case brought against a former president of the United States. People are entitled to their own opinions, much like how Fannie Willis played the race card here. Now, some analysts actually like that she's speaking her mind because it shows just how entitled she is with this case. And as you heard, she seems to have forgotten that it's not all about her. That only happened because she and Nathan Wade lied under oath. But still, the fact is that Willis is undermining the justice system and it's very clear that the law is different if your name is Donald J. Trump. And here's where more smoke comes out for Willis. Investigations are now underway to confirm how the J6 committee may have had communications with her and Nathan Wade in the early days of the Georgia case. Now you have to remember that Trump is dealing with a state issue, not a federal one. So why is the J6 committee getting in contact with the likes of Nathan Wade. So this happened back in mid-April 2022 when staff committee discreetly met with lawyers and agents working for Fulton County DA Fannie Willis. Now this was right around the time when she was preparing to gather a special grand jury investigation. And just to add a little bit more fuel to the fire, it's reported that the J6 committee aides, they even let Fannie Willis's team review a limited set of evidence that they had gathered. Within the next months after the meeting, committee staff were also reported to have a series of phone calls with Fannie Willis's team. This was to answer any questions that the prosecutors had with the aides sharing their insight on matters that were ultimately used in the criminal charges that Willis brought against Donald Trump and his co-defendants last summer. This entire communication line between the state and the federal body, it's highly unusual. It's one that Republican Representative Barry Loudermilk has also called out because this isn't something that happens every day. Now, Loudermilk is already cooperating with Representatives Jim Jordan and James Comer to confirm the visits of Fannie Willis's team to the White House. Now you also have to think about the possibility of this entire scenario being seen as election interference because they knew long ago that Trump would run in 2024. Some critics argue that if this kind of action was done under the Trump administration, he would have already been impeached. Now, is there a chance that Willis is silenced much like Trump? Many experts say that this is not gonna happen. They can come up with whatever narrative that they want, but they're just not gonna be able to put a gag order on Fannie Willis. They could do it to Trump, but they won't do it to Fannie Willis, nor will they do it to Letitia James Alan Bragg, or Jack Smith. All of these individuals have the right to speak their minds when it comes to Trump. However, this isn't the first time that Fannie Willis has made a fool out of Judge McAfee. She seems to have a habit of undermining him even in his own courtroom. Now, this has some experts predicting that there's a slim chance that the DA is told that she has to tone it down even further. Although, we already expect that she's not going to do that in the slightest. But there is a chance that she's still disqualified from this case, something that is now becoming more and more likely as time goes by because Georgia has has to at least keep some of its dignity and credibility with its residents as well as with the entire country. The appeal to remove Fannie Willis from the case will be randomly assigned to a three-judge panel. So the good news for Donald Trump is that only one of these judges has to say yes in order for them to take up the appeal. So what do you guys think is going to happen here? And should Fannie Willis be removed from this case? As always, I'm going to do my best to keep you guys updated and informed on this case so that we can discuss exactly what's going on here. Now before I go, I just want to thank you all for hanging out. Thanks for hitting the like button. Thank you for sharing this video and I'll see you on the next one.